morning as we begin our service and let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your love, your mercy, and especially this time of year. We thank you most of all that you came to this earth, uh, Lord, to uh, come as a baby so that you could offer your life as a sacrifice for our sins. Help us as we celebrate your coming. And Lord, we just pray that each and every one will experience that in their own hearts. Lord, just be with us now as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn now over to 89. Oh, come all you faithful. 89. <laughs> Just a moment and uh, go over a few announcements and prayer concerns. 
Uh, we appreciate uh, this morning the flowers uh, from Miss Bonnie in memory of her father, J.W. Cole, and uh, appreciate her putting them in. Please note that uh, we have the new flower calendar out for next year if you would like to uh, sign up uh, for a Sunday next year. Uh, we are in a season of prayer for international missions uh, and uh, also taking uh, doing our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Our goal this year is $1,200, and so far we've received uh, 220. Uh, all of the money that is received goes directly to help uh, with uh, international missions all over the world. Uh, and uh, this is part of how we as uh, uh, Southern Baptists uh, are fulfilling the Great Commission as we help support this work going on all over uh, the world. Please note we'll have church conference uh, right after the service uh, to uh, for the finance committee to pre present the proposed budget for uh, for this coming year. Hard to believe it's uh, not only the end of the year, but uh, fixing to be 2023. Mm -hmm. Folks, when I was in school 100 years ago, <laughs> I didn't think I'd live to see the year 2000. And here it is, 2023. Man, oh man, it's going by. Uh, but uh, anyway, but I'm excited to still be here. Amen. Amen. Uh, please note the uh, WMU, uh, we appreciate uh, the canned goods that you brought for the shut-ins, uh, and uh, today was the cutoff for that. If you have some and you hadn't got them here yet, please see Bonnie or Karen, uh, and uh, this week they're going to be working on getting all that together, and then next Sunday we need your help. Uh, we're going to have them uh, uh, ready to go and ready to be delivered, and they're going to have a name on them and an address, and uh, we need your help. Uh, going and delivering these uh, items, and uh, but also uh, giving, spending just a little bit of time with the individual uh, with a visit. Uh, they uh, they would uh, love to have a visit from you, uh, and we need your help with that. Uh, if you would like to put poinsettias, uh, put a poinsettia in the sanctuary for Christmas, uh, we need you to sign up by this Wednesday. Uh, and uh, the sign-up sheet is in the foyer, and there's still a lot of room left. Uh, but uh, they're always so beautiful, and uh, we appreciate your help uh, with this. Also, we have uh, the uh, new offering envelopes uh, for next year. If you'd like to get a box, they're up front uh, this year. So I encourage you to uh, pick one of those up, and we appreciate uh, your faithfulness. And you see the information there about Christmas Day. Uh, Christmas is on Sunday. We'll not have Sunday school, uh, but we will have 11 a.m. worship service. We have several to remember for prayer. I want to remember all of these on our prayer list. I want to uh, remember uh, Sawyer Vines. Uh, this is a little two-year-old girl. You may mention her. She had a tumor removed from her brain, uh, but uh, she's uh, going to have to have a bone marrow transplant also. Uh, remember uh, Miss Catherine Smith. Uh, she has been in the hospital with pneumonia, and she's at home uh, recovering. Remember also Sue Bird. She's uh, they took her uh, this weekend to uh, Douglas General. She has pneumonia, and uh, remember her. She was still in the ER yesterday, so uh, keep her in your prayers. Remember Georgia Kirby uh, under hospice care uh, with uh, her bladder cancer. And then remember uh, Julie King, uh, <clears throat> Miss Kathy's uh, daughter, she failed, uh, hurt herself yesterday. She's okay, but bruised up, so uh, remember her. What else do we need to mention? Anything else? Yes, Miss Molly. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Zandra's sister-in-law, uh, they uh, think she's got pancreatic cancer. Uh, and they were going to do a test this week, but that didn't. They weren't able to do it, so they're going to have to do something else. So uh, re remember her. Oh, they were okay. She does have pancreatic. Okay. So so remember remember her, Margie James. All right. Anything else? Two. All right. And Willis will have tubes in her ears on the 21st. Willis having tubes on the 21st. Mm -hmm. 
She's also eating Megan and Jason out of house and home. <laughs> Anybody wants to do a pantry shower for them? <laughs> It's, it's so refreshing. She didn't eat for so long, and now she's just, like, hungry all the time. So uh, are y'all going to make it? You'll survive. All right. Be a tough Christmas. All right. Uh, anything else? Yes. Yes, Miss Diane. All right. What's what's his name? Tim White. All right. Anything else? All right. Any unspoken concerns? All right. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the privilege to be here. We thank you for just being so good to us. We thank you for this Christmas season. We pray for our country, Lord. We pray, Lord, that our leaders will might uh, look to you for wisdom and guidance. Lord, we uh, pray for <clears throat> these on our prayer list. We pray for these we've mentioned. We pray that, uh, <clears throat> Lord, you might do what only you can do, be with these unspoken concerns. Lord, I pray especially that uh, as we uh, worship you here, as we sing, as we pray, as your word is preached, Lord, I pray that we are reminded and experience the true meaning of Christmas and we experience your power and presence in our heart and life and that we're drawn closer to you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Turn now over to 103, away in a manger, 103. Jesus Christ is 
Thank you, choir. What a great job. This morning, if you will, turn to Matthew chapter 1 for our scripture passage. We're going to be, we've been looking at uh, not what we get for Christmas, but what we, that Christmas is about what we give. Today we're going to look at the story of the angel coming to Joseph and uh, telling him that Mary is going to have a child, what to do. So let's, uh, if you found Matthew chapter 1 verse 18, if you would please stand if you're able as we honor the reading of God's word. And the word of God says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. When he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your coming. God, we thank you that uh, you understand our humanity better than we understand ourselves. God, we also understand that because of our relationship with you, Lord, we demonstrate our faith through our obedience. Have your way in our hearts and lives. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We've seen how Gabriel the angel came to Zechariah and Elizabeth, well, technically just to Zechariah and announced uh, that uh, they were going to have a son and his name would be John. The angel came to Mary and told her that she was going to conceive a child by the Spirit of God and, uh, uh, and he, he would be the Messiah. In both of these cases, uh, these uh, events that the angel foretold were would be miraculous. 
In Zechariah and Elizabeth's case, Elizabeth was past the age to have a child. In, in Mary's case, she had not known a man. She was still a virgin. And we saw how uh, Zacharias, he was a little bit confused when he heard the news and he responded uh, with fear and unbelief. We saw last week how Mary, uh, even though she didn't understand everything and it would have been overwhelming, she replied, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Lord, you do with me however you see fit. Now this morning we want to look at Joseph and uh, his encounter with the angel. Uh, <clears throat> this passage starts by saying now, the birth of Jesus was on this wise. This, he's saying uh, this is the way it happened. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew's saying uh, this is the truth. Uh, I'm sure that uh, when Matthew wrote his gospel, there were a lot of stories about the birth of Christ. And uh, many rumors and things of, that were not true. And Matthew said, okay, this is what happened. Uh, and, and remember that Matthew, Matthew is writing primarily to a Jewish audience, whereas Luke writes more to a Gentile audience. Uh, and so uh, Matthew is seeking to affirm Jesus' legitimacy as the Messiah. Uh, and we find that uh, we're given some information here. Mary and Joseph have been betrothed to one another talked about this at length, uh, their marriage would have been arranged ahead of time. Be like, uh, Bethany, be, be like your mom and daddy getting together with another couple and picking out who you're going to marry. Does that sound like a good idea? Huh? Huh? I can't hear, I can't hear the, the rocks in your head rattling. And we got to understand, the, the culture was different. And this is going to seem odd to us, but to their, their marriage had been prearranged years before, but now they are, they've are they come to the what they call the betrothal period. Now, uh, this was a period of uh, saying, okay, this is going to take place, they are going to get married, uh, the betrothal period took about a year, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less, it was a time for the the future husband to get the house ready and to make all of the necessary preparations for the home and to be able to support his wife. It was also a time for the bride-to-be to get everything ready from her perspective. They did not live together, uh, and uh, apparently they did not spend much time talking to each other, but in the eyes of the law, they were already considered married. It's very important. We're told that here they are in this very important period of time. Mary is all excited looking uh, to, uh, for the day when her and Joseph are going to be together. The angel comes to her and says, you're about to have a child. She says, okay. But then notice something here. From Matthew's perspective, uh, it says that... Uh, uh, the last part of verse 18, she was a spouse to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the language here is, is very interesting because it, it indicates that uh, all of a sudden, uh, Joseph found something out he didn't know. He found something out that was quite shocking to him. He found something out that he, he had never anticipated finding. His future wife was pregnant. And he knew a couple of things. He knew he had been faithful. He knew he had been faithful to her. He knew they had not come together. And immediately, once he, he found this information out, his mind began to wander, trying to understand what in the world had happened. Now, one of the things that I think uh, is puzzling to us is that apparently Mary did not share her encounter with the angel with Joseph. Uh, could be for several reasons. Could be in that culture, 
Uh, they, the, the future husband and bride didn't spend a lot of time alone together. And this is not something you want to talk about uh, with a bunch of people around. But secondly, uh, ladies, let's just be honest. How are you going to explain something like this to your future husband? Amen? Uh, you, you know, uh, and, and, and she didn't know what to say. For, for whatever reason, she had not shared what was going on from her perspective. Uh, she, she, she knew, though, that the time was coming when it was going to be apparent that she was pregnant. And finally the day came and Joseph realized his future wife was pregnant. This would have devastated him. This would have broken his heart. He loved Mary. He had planned to spend the rest of his life with her and all he could think of was how could she do this to him? Because in his mind, she'd been unfaithful to him. To him, he had been faithful to her. They had not come together. So apparently, she had been with another man. But I want you to notice something. The very last part of verse 18, we're given a little bit of information that Joseph didn't have access to. It says she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph didn't have that information. Uh, and so, uh, it tells us next that uh, uh, he was a just man. He's trying to figure out what to do. Now, uh, the word just means one who is fair or equitable. Uh, one who lives in accordance with the standards of acceptable behavior. But here in this context, we need to understand that ju he's just in the sense of, of wanting to do exactly what God wanted him to do. He's not so concerned about the culture. He's not so concerned about what everybody else thinks. He's thinking about God's Word. He's thinking about the law. And, and he's trying to figure out, God, what is the right thing to do? He wanted to honor God with his life. And we're told here that he, that he knew this was serious. And he didn't want to make a public example of her. Uh, he didn't want to embarrass her. He didn't want to ruin her. But in his eyes, she had been unfaithful to him. And, and so according to the law, the, the right thing to do would have been to publicly, it would have been his right to publicly divorce her, but he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to draw attention to her. Uh, so he, he determined to, to divorce her privately. Do it quietly. Uh, do it as, as simple as he could so that she could go somewhere and, and resume her life somewhere else. He thought about it. And then he said, okay, that's what we're going to do. You ever done that? You ever been faced with a, a situation or circumstances and you, and you thought about it and you weighed the options and, uh, and you finally come to some conclusion? And you got, okay, I got this. He may have even said, I've got peace about this. But he went to sleep. And while he is sleeping, God comes to him with his angel. Gabriel is a busy angel. Amen? He's been working hard. He, uh, he, comes, he comes to Joseph and catches him completely off guard and interrupts him. Uh, I, I don't know if you've 
paid attention to this. I, I keep mentioning it every week. But you notice how when God gets involved, He interrupts what we're doing. Amen? He interrupted Zechariah and Elizabeth. He definitely interrupted Mary. Now He's interrupting Joseph and all of His plans and everything. He's just come to the conclusion about God comes in and interrupts everything. And the angel says, Joseph, don't be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. I know you have all kinds of thoughts that somehow she's been unfaithful to you. That's not the truth. You don't understand. She's not been unfaithful to you. Yes, she is pregnant. But the child that she is carrying has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is the work of God. This is a miracle. And God wants you to come and join in with what He's doing and be a father to this son who will be born. And notice He says, the angel says, and and you shall call Him Jesus, for He will save His people from their sins. Now, when the angel told him that, he knew immediately what's going on. He understood the angel was saying that the Messiah that they've been praying for for hundreds of years, that the angel is saying, your wife-to-be is pregnant with him and and she's going to give birth to him and you're going to call him Jesus. The one that you've been praying for is here and you're fixing to be his father on earth. You know, uh, sometimes we pray for things. And then when God answers our prayers, we want to back up and say, whoa, 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 God, I wasn't that serious. Or I didn't mean for you to involve me like this. But notice, uh, the angel says, Joseph, The child that she is carrying is the very Son of God who will save His people from their sins. Then He goes a step further. Then He he uses the prophet Isaiah and He quotes Isaiah 7.14 where it says, A virgin will conceive and bear a son And they will call his name Emmanuel, which Matthew interprets for us as God with us. See, I want you to notice something here. The angel says, listen, this is what's going on. Uh, Mary is pregnant, but but, uh, the child is conceived of the Holy Spirit. She's not been unfaithful to you. He's just explaining what's going on, but then he goes to Scripture... And and he uses Scripture to emphasize and to to, uh, reveal that this is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah about the coming of the Messiah. Now, let's stop here for just a second. I'm sure when the angel told Joseph all of this, He's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. Amen? No. No. He didn't have a clue. He understood what he was saying. He knew his wife-to-be was pregnant. He understood that the angel, what the angel said, he understood the angel said, this is the Messiah you've been praying for. But he didn't understand any of it. Folks, we need to realize that when God is at work, when God calls us to join in what He's doing, more than likely we're not going to understand what He's doing. Because God's a whole lot greater than us. Amen? If we can understand everything about what God is doing. Maybe it's not of God. 
Because folks, when God is at work, it's so much greater and grander than us. But we need to have faith in God and do what He tells us to do. One more comment before we move on. Please note that God will never tell us to sin and go against His Word. He never will. I have over the years, I have heard people justify, and some of them even use Scripture, to try to justify why it's okay for them to sin against God. Folks, that's not what's going on here. Amen? Do you understand that? If you somehow, if, if God's Word says something is wrong, then don't go and try to figure out a way that, that you can say it's okay. That somehow God has given you an exception or an exclusion clause. Folks, God will never tell us to do something that He tells us in His Word not to do. But yet we like to blame God. We like to say things like, well, you know, I prayed about this and God told me to do so and so. Folks, God gets blamed for a lot of things. In fact, folks, I, I'll tell you, I get a little nervous when I hear somebody start throwing around those words. Well, God told me this. Uh, folks, oftentimes, it's not God. It's us. Amen? It's us. It's what we want. Because God has told us what He wants in His Word. Now, what's Joseph going to do? How's he going to respond? Now, if uh, Joseph was a good Baptist, this would not have, not have turned out so well. He would have, uh, he would have woke up, he would have formed a committee, and it done some exploring, and uh, six, seven months later, he'd have come to some conclusions. But thank goodness he didn't do that. He woke up, and what does it say? He did exactly what the angel said. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. I find that very interesting. He didn't question it. He didn't doubt it. He didn't ponder it. He didn't, he didn't think about it. He, he knew God. He knew the angel spoke to him. He understood what the angel was saying and that this was the, the, the Messiah. He didn't know how it was all going to work out, but he understood this was God's Word, and so he did exactly what the angel told him to do. He just obeyed. You know what God wants from us? Our obedience. That's what He wants. I am convinced when you study the, the story of the Hebrews in the wilderness on the way to the promised land, one of the things that God is trying to teach His people is to just trust and obey God. And that's what Joseph did. Joseph took Mary as his wife Jesus was born in Bethlehem, all according to Scripture. Now some might say, well preacher, if an angel came to me and told me all this, I'd do exactly what he said too. 
I hope so, but I, I want to tell you something. God's given us something Joseph didn't have. His word. His word. What are we doing with what God has already given to us? I read uh, in a story, history book of the Smoky Mountains years ago. Uh, when the Cherokees were still in the Smokies before they made them move. Uh, there was a uh, army general or captain that came through and he had a Bible that he gave to one of the chiefs and uh, told the chief to read it and the chief could read English and so he did read it and uh, the, the army guy went back and he said well what do you think of the book and he said oh this is a powerful book this has got some strong powerful words in it And then the Indian said, did y'all just get a copy of this book yourselves? He was implying that they weren't following what the book says. And sadly, the, the army captain had to tell him, oh no, we've had this book for centuries. The Indian says, it's not doing you any good. Folks, we don't need an angel to come and see us we need to just do what God's Word tells us to do. Amen? We demonstrate our faith through our obedience to His Word. Joseph revealed his faith in God by doing exactly what God told him to do. He didn't do what he thought was best. He didn't do what made sense to him. He didn't do what was the acceptable thing. Instead, God made clear His Word and He obeyed. But it took faith. Amen? It wasn't easy for Him to do this. He had all kinds of objections in His mind. Probably people still talk. People were going to run their mouths. People were going to talk bad about him. People were going to talk bad about Mary. But it didn't matter. It was more important to just obey God. As we come to this time where we celebrate Christmas, how are we demonstrating our faith? Through our obedience to the Lord. In his word. Not focusing on what we want to do. Parts we like. And ignoring the stuff we don't like. But are we willing to obey him with everything he has given us? That's what he wants from us. we come to a conclusion, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to do so today. But folks, what we need to see that what honors God is our obedience to Him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for Your love and mercy and goodness to us and just the privilege to be here in this place. Help us, Lord, as we Look to you, I pray, Lord, if there's one who does not know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be the time and the place where they might trust you, give their heart and life to you. Lord, I pray especially for us as your people. Lord, that we might demonstrate our faith, especially during this Christmas season, through our obedience to you. Help us to put you first. Help us to love you more than anything in this world. Help us to love one another as the body of Christ. Help us to love the laws. Help us to share the gospel with the laws. Help us to be busy doing your work. In the precious name of Jesus we pray.